Well, good morning, everybody. Today I'm at the American Military Heritage Museum down in Stevens City, Virginia, for their World War II, well, not World War II, but a military timeline. Got uh, veterans here from World War II, Korea, and the Vietnam War, and Desert Storm. And also, we got a lot of reenactors here that have displays set up, and we have a whole bunch of vehicles. And uh, I'll take you inside the museum here itself. Take a look around. Now, right behind me, we got a uh, Stewart tank, and that that was manufactured in 1944. I was able to get a ride on top of that this morning, ride around the parking lot a little bit. That was pretty fun. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna take a walk around here, and I'll show you everything. All right, right now we got a Willys M170 1953 ambulance jeep. Do a little walk around here. Got some mannequins in the back. That poor girl, she got wounded somehow. And this guy's got a busted wing. Now this one here is a uh, M38A1C with a 106 millimeter recoilless rifle on it. And as you can see, it's got a split windshield. When they lay the barrel down, it'll go right between the windshield there and rest on that bracket right there. And right there is one of the shells. On the recoilless rifles, you can see on the brass, it's got holes all through it. That's for the recoil. So don't jerk it off. And here's the recoilless rifle itself. And you can see it's got the open breech on it. There's a really nice 1945 Farmall M model tractor. And this one here is a McCormick Deering Farmall Model A. Date of delivery was 1942 on this one. Now how would you get on that? Look at that thing. How would you how would you mount and drive? Look look at it. Here's a car from the 1940s. Right now it's being used as Civil Air Patrol. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Now on, on here they got a little poster of uh, 1943, what the cost of living was. Buy a new house for $3,600. The average income was $2,000 a year. New car cost you $900. $40 a month for rent. And uh, movie ticket was 35 cents. Gas gasoline was 15 cents a gallon back then, and a stamp was three cents. Twenty thousand, maybe twice over. Here's the inside of it. No, miles per hour. That's a, a beautiful car. You can see it for the Civil Air Patrol armband and civilian gas mask. Here's the back of it. See, it's got a Remember Pearl Harbor license plate topper on it. Next up is the uh, Soviet light truck, four-door filled car. It's a 4x4. From 1953 to 1972. They got us pushed up against here. Can't get it. the whole thing in the same shot. But. But this is what the commies drove. Next up, we got a Munga German Army 1961 vehicle. A little information on this one. If you want to read all of that, just hit the pause button. Next up, we got a U.S. Army World War II Jeep. 
Got the caliber mounted on the back of it. A little close up of a 50 caliber here. It's uh, not a real gun, but it just looks like one. Now, if you're wondering what this gadget is on the front of the Jeep, it's called a wire cutter. GIs developed this during World War II because sometimes they would ride with the windshield down and the Germans would string piano wire across the road at uh, about neck level and uh, it would decapitate them. So they come up with this ingenious idea. There's some of the stuff in the back of it. Now we got a, a British bike here. Paratroopers would have used these, dropped them, and they would get on there and ride those around the field. It's a British bazooka. Another vehicle all decked out with machine guns and all kinds of stuff on it. Thank you. Now here's a British motorcycle, an M20. Not from 1939. And right behind it we've got a British uniform. Now we're in a British camp. A little World War II display. This is a World War II British. And I believe that's What's this, Italian? Yes, sir. All right. World War II Italian uniform. Yeah. I did the it's the 3rd Canterbury Battalion, I Kent Home Guard out. weapons display. I dropped out when people were about high school. Got a brain gun on the bottom. <laughs> and I got the Home Guard. Now what we're looking here, it's a, a T-16 Universe Carrier made by Ford in 1943. You people that's underage, close your eyes. And you can see the weapons on there. Alright, here's what it looks like inside. And that machine gun over there, 45 caliber, they call it a uh, grease gun. Now we got a deuce and a half here, troop carrier. Another deuce and a half over here. I believe this is from the 70s, probably from the Vietnam War. Uh, this here is called a command car, which would uh, carry the generals around and high ranking officers. On the back of it there, tailgate comes down. I think they've got a radio and things like that inside there. But on the rack there, you would carry your shovel, your pick, and probably an ax. All right, in these command cars, there's a lots of room in the back. And you can see the board right here, which will come up and over, and they would use that as a like a desk. They could study their maps on there. And here's the front seat of it. It's also got this part right here slides out where you can have like a little desk also. Now this truck here is a 1941 Chevy. Little Chevrolet. And we got another World War II Jeep, but it's been... Now they got the Stuart tank here, letting people climb on top of it, looking inside. That's from 1944. Uh, 
There's an older car cab to. ever, four to five ton truck from 1944. And here's the inside of the truck. Here's the back of it. Now, this patch right here is from the Red Bull Express. That was. Here's a nice display from the Army Air Corps. Black helmet, black vest. Some gear. Parachute. <laughs> now we're at my friend's battalion aid station display. This guy got wounded real bad and they're in the process of trying to save his life. See the pieces of shrapnel in there they took out of him. Scalpel. All the bandages. Medical tags. And on the ground, they throw the bloody bandages down. Now we're at the 69th Division. All right, Norm, tell us your name and, and uh, what, what's your impression here? Uh, Second Lieutenant Norman Byrne, uh, here doing a uh, aid station doctor, World War II, 1944 in Europe. Uh, we are approximately one, one mile or so, give or take, off the fighting line, uh, close enough for the uh, more wounded to be, seriously wounded to be transported back by Jeep within a matter of minutes to receive attention and aid, and the less se severely wounded to be able to walk back and then receive immediate attention. Um, what I've tried to do here with my display is uh, portray a little bit of everything that would have went on at the aid station from the uh, standard equipment and tools being used to the uh, paperwork with the uh, names of the wounded uh, being counted and kept track of uh, to our surgical area and our uh, sterilization area. Okay, thank you. All right, here's a Dodge WC54 three quarter ton ambulance. Most of you will probably remember this as from being on TV show MASH. And there's the inside of it. Now we've got a Vietnam War display going on here. M14. Shotgun, M16s, grenade launchers. Got a Claymore mine set up here. See the different hand grenades and smoke grenades they used. I got one over here set up. Oh boy. Um, so yeah, that was a now we got a display set up from the Ruskies. Different uniforms. Yeah, the one there in the neon green shirt with the green Now, Out front here, we got a captured uh, German Panzerfaust, or excuse me, Panzer Shrek. That means German bazooka. There's a Panzerfaust and a couple hand grenades. And we got a mortar, machine gun, 
There's the original poster from the war. Now back in an American camp. BAR, which is Browning Automatic Rifle. Now we got a Civil War display set up. We got the rifles and bayonets stacked up. Although I did, though I never went to high school. I do when I took the English, you can teach yourself anything. And I thought teaching my son. <laughs> a devil dog. That's right. <laughs> Take care, sir. Would, would Enjoy you, the day. Would you mind if I get you on my video? Huh? Would you mind if I get you on my video? No, no. No, you. Oh. Can you can you tell me uh, your impression here? Let me get sharp here. All right. Just a brief description of what you do. Uh, I do 1861 weeks to Louisiana Tigers. All right. We were raised from <clears throat> by Robido Wheat in 60, 61. We fought with uh, Robido Wheat in uh, Italy with Garibaldi. And then when the Civil War started up, Robido Wheat came back and raised a regiment in Louisiana, New Orleans. All right. And uh, we, uh, the veterans that were with me raised the unit uh, in Louisiana. And uh, we fought. Uh, all the major early battles, and um, we were decimated by 62, just so few of us, that they amalgamated us into the Louisiana Brigade, okay. and we fought all the way through the war. The rest of the war with the Louisiana Brigade. All right, thank you. Now we got a M151A1 from 1965. Now here's a World War I German Imperial display. Yeah, see a lot of Yeah, you gotta check out the museum. Yeah, we'll, we'll walk around. Yeah, we'll see. They're giving some, a ride. Some of the rifles stacked up. Yeah, there's a wee with it too. Butcher bayonet with it. Now, yep. the World War One models, do they get duffel cut like the? It should be yours. Are you selling it? No, no, the, the G898. Oh, <laughs> he tried to sell it. I have very little in it. Oh, yeah. Look at this Max. Holy Max. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think this might be Rhodesian display. Probably from the 80s, maybe 90s. Yeah, here we got a Japanese World War II display. I got enough sun last weekend, so I'm hiding in here for a bit. <laughs> What era? 80s, 90s? Alright. Uh, here's a display from the German Africa Corps. If you remember the movie or TV series, The Rat Patrol. Now we're in a Ger German camp, World War II. MG 34. Panzerfaust, and that would be an extra barrel for the machine gun because they overheat really bad. German cannon. I say was nothing but an army, because mm -hmm. that's what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, the Germans, the dissension. There's a case of German grenades. They call those the uh, potato mashers because that's what they look like. That's how Hitler was able to There's a stack of K98 rifles. And the Jews stabbed us in the back. 
There's a truck from the 1930. This thing's really nice. That's a Ford. The guy told me that the German Army actually used Ford trucks during World War II. Got some gear laying on there. A really nice truck. All right, I'm back in the Russian camp. I couldn't get to this part early because there's too many people in the way. Oh, well, I gotta get up. Move on. Good talking to you. Don't see you again. We'll see you next year. All right, I'll see you next year, Doug. You have a good one. What you guys doing out there? All right, here's a really nice home front display. license plate toppers and then go <laughs> give them hell all right now we're inside the main museum here it's a small museum but it's really nice Uh, here's a dress made of a parachute. Let's go look at some. That's really interesting. Some capture items: German flag, some insignia. There's a display for the 29th Division. This, this is what they dressed up like when they hit the beach of Normandy in Omaha. And here's a ranger's vest. The uniform of Randall Raymond Rankin. Rankin. Second Ranger Battalion. Boxes of original ammo from World War II. Dummy armor piercing, uh, incendiary, 30 caliber carbine, pistol. TNT. Here we got a blue denim jacket that was used on a POW. Now we're coming into the CCC items. Civilian Conservation Corps, that's what that stood for. 
Now here's some souvenir wooden shoes from Holland and Belgium. Did he? Yeah. A couple others, but uh, this guy here just had some stories. Jenny Larson. Yeah. He went to our church. It's an M41 Phil jacket. Mm -hmm. And we got some canteens, mess kits, rations. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -oh. Cigarettes, booklets. This guy was from the Indiana area. He said, "No, they married their children." He was wounded. He said, "Yeah, he was a machine gun." Well, I don't think anybody's here all night. Dress up, say, "Oh, my God." It's a jacket and pistol rig and a helmet of an MP. It's a McLean saddle, adapted in 1859. Marine uniform, dress blues and greens. There's a real salty, really nice P41. <coughs> Got ammo cases everywhere. Back here we got a field telephone switchboard. Typewriter. Some of you young people might not have ever heard of a typewriter. A whole bunch of field phones. Walkie talkies. These were cell phones during World War II. You just couldn't take a selfie with them or take pictures. There's a real nice display of uh, mountain troops, 10th Mountain Division. Got to excuse the glare, but some capture bring back German items. <coughs> Cooking equipment. Don't know if I can get these too good. You got the sun coming in on them. But it's all bayonets and knives. Now here in the corner we got uh, 81 millimeter mortar and a 60 millimeter mortar. There's an 81 millimeter mortar that they put a stand on it. Uh, here's a 60 millimeter mortar. Got a lot of nice stuff in here. And here's my favorite part of the museum in here. paratrooper section 101st on top 82nd on the bottom Uh, 
right there we got a Hawkins mine. And we got a medics display. A lot of really cool medical display. Getting into the air war, Army Air Corps, 15th Air Force flight suit. There's a uniform of Thomas Underwood. And the Timberwolves. Here we got a tanker uniform. In the case up there, we have a Medal of Honor and a whole bunch of Legion of Merits. Excuse the glare. Pretty good. You, hey, Marty. You're doing well. And you, the sun's drying. And some Red Cross uniforms. Yeah. And here's a whole bunch of really cool stuff for the Army Air Corps. Yeah, he was in the Territorial Guard unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did he grow up? Very good. We still have a lot of boys in the Very deal, but... I know, I know. I tried to get him. I like that. Some of them. Yeah, they... Well, you never know anymore. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you, yeah, yeah. Marshall said 7-7. There's a captain's uniform in the Army Air Corps. He was 15th Air Force. He's a yeah, yeah. flight jacket. I used to call him when he got killed in that damn car. Right yep. We used, to, we used to call him when he was in the dark from the steel boy. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. We got a life vest that was Kenneth Walsh, Marine Corps Medal of Honor winner. Include the F4U Corsair. Got a bunch of different uniforms in here. Yeah, the glare's getting bad on that case. Uh, German helmet. All right, right here we got a puzzle ring. 
Little bell of St. Michael. Want to read that? Just pause it. Of home front items. Alright, here's a 3D map of the island of Oahu, Hawaii, and you can see Pearl Harbor in there. I guess you can see it's 3D. The uniform of Lieutenant Hubert Barnes, Air Transport Command, China Burma Indy Theater. Now we got the uniform of Roger Sargent. He was a D-Day veteran in the 83rd Division, 329th Regiment. Here's a beautiful World War I uniform, 29th Division. <coughs> Here's the uniform of Corporal Selen Wagger. Just a bunch of different World War One gear. Really nice shotgun cartridge belt. This brick here was removed from the Rex Marshall Hermann Goering's home. There's a postcard from the American POW to Rem Moron, Germany, December 17th. 1944. And you got a Russian uniform. And German uniform. All right, now I'll take you into the Vietnam section. A war we should never went into and also Korean items back here Korean War souvenir jacket
Now getting in a, a green beret. These are home movies. Looks like a little eight millimeter. Slits and Budweiser beer. It was popular back in the Vietnam War. transistor radios and pocket cameras that's really nice original green beret hat all right here's a navy hammock uh, Gordon Raymond he was killed in action by a Japanese kamikaze attack And up top there we got some bazookas, some posters, and some bombs. And here we got a cutaway version of the of the Browning 30 caliber machine gun. A little dark up there. Here's the USM-60 machine gun used a lot during the Vietnam War. And here's an RPG-2 used by Soviet and other communist forces. The BAR, but unfortunately that's a BB gun. Uh, it displays well. Thompson, 45 caliber. Right, here's a German World War II submachine gun, the MP40. German World War II MG34. British Bren gun. This is the Lewis gun that was used in World War One. And here's the Browning 30 caliber machine gun used by the U.S. You're on. Right, my name is Joey Funkhauser. I'm a local from City here. Uh, these are our family members that served Vietnam to the First World War. All right. Here. Uh, John Funkhauser, a cousin of ours. He was killed in action in October 1918. These are gone. He's buried in Arlington Cemetery. We have a couple letters he wrote home. This is my grandfather. He served in World War II. He was in the Signal Corps. He took a lot of photographs while he was over there. This is actually a helmet he picked up off this uh, the German there. This is my great uncle Irwin. He was in the Airborne Engineers. They would build the runways. And the Japanese would come in and uh, try to bomb the runways and uh, when the planes crashed they would actually go and pick up souvenirs from the pilots. We got uh, some cigarettes and eyeglasses and things like that. Wow. Alright, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
they call these the army housewife. What they are, they uh, like, like a sewing kit in there with thread, and needles, and extra buttons. down in German encampment. This is the inside of a tent. Probably an officer's tent. P44. German Red Cross box. Out there, we have flares in there for a flare pistol. He said that this was their over-engineered German stuff. <laughs> Everything is over. He, he, look at look at the net above me. Look at all those little hands for attaching it to other to other nets. Right. But that's an original that's an original German army. And when you find them, I paid about five hundred. You got to sell, you got to sell them. And he's selling some of his shit anyway. Oh yeah. I said, I'll give you 500 cash for it right now. And that's what he paid for. So he didn't shit me. I mean, he didn't make no money, but he recovered his money. Because that's about what they're going for. And here comes the German horses. But there is actually a picture of him. All right, right now I'm sitting inside the driver's seat in the Stuart tank. There's the instrument panel, the RPMs, oil pressure, water temperature, ignition switch. You got two Cadillac engines in this. Okay, there's the assistant driver's seat. He'd be the assistant driver and also he would handle the machine gun. Then you would have spare ammo cans for the machine guns. Down here you got your gears. You got your drive low and reverse and neutral. And this here is for the right track. This here is for the left track. Just like driving a like a tractor. And you got your compass. And of course you got a fire extinguisher. Now we're looking down through the top of it. This is where the gunner would sit. There's the breach on the gun. And down there was where I just was in the driver's seat. And you got your radios behind you. And this is the driver's hatch. You shut that, and uh, there's a periscope right here. This, this part here is the periscope. The driver would look inside there, and the view would be coming out there when the hatch is closed, so you don't get your head shot off.
right, that's going to be it on my video today. I'm here with my friend Christine. Hello, Miss Victory. And, and there's Rick. All right, hope you enjoyed this tour today. We'll see you on the next video. Have a good day.